For purpose of clarity, I've left off the prony brake and the drum here that ordinarily fit. Refer to lap three as to how to put a prony brake on and drum. Exact same rules hold. And also for measuring the torque, it also holds for that. The next step is to take an A36, or sometimes known as a BL36, same sort of belt, and put it on the sheaths. Of course, notice it doesn't quite stretch because when this is fully tightened, it will be too tight to put on the sheath. The first thing you really have to do is take the motor and move it towards the driven belt. To do that, what we do is we raise the motor. So go ahead and raise it. And to make life easy on myself, I go ahead and take this jam nut and move it up. Now I've got a much tighter space to work between here and here, making it easy, relatively easy to put on the belt. Since this is the larger of the two sheaths, I put the belt on this sheath first, and then on this sheath, I usually put it on the top. I can't quite stretch it around the sheath yet, but that's okay. I put it on the top, and then I rotate the sheath, which snaps the belt in place, and now I have the belt firmly in the V. Of course, squeezing it, you can see, almost no tension at all. That's fine. Now at this point, we lower the motor down to tension the belt. And so you can see as we lower the motor, typically by using our jam nut, and I'm going to lower that down about three-fourths. You're going to let the motor sag. And as you can see, as you let the motor go down by itself, the belt's starting to hold on to the motor itself. Ultimately, what's going to hold the motor down is not the bottom nut that holds the base up. It's going to be the top nut that holds the base down. Of course, the belt... Two thirds of the way up is where this thing, where this bolt normally sets at its lowest point. And I'll screw down to that point. And only at this point you can see a little bit more tension. That's good. I want to go further than that though, so I keep tightening this bolt, this nut. And for this, we're going to need a wrench to go out and tighten this nut. So a three four inch wrench does a very nice job in tightening this nut down. I'll just go ahead and do that. Crest the wrench it because at this point that's about really the only way you're going to get this tight enough to get a good firm tension on it. And just keep working it and what you're watching for is to make sure these shafts stay parallel because this is too if one of these is too loose, particularly the shaft end too loose, it will pull the shaft sideways, canning it, and keeping these out of the line. Belts need to be aligned, as otherwise the belt will start to align against the side of the, the inside part of the sheath, rather than just come straight off the channel. And so I tighten. Now this is a relatively new belt, although it is somewhat used, so it would probably fall on the low end of the force of new belts. New belts tend to stretch more, so that, therefore we want more tension on a new belt because it will stretch pretty rapidly. Whereas a used belt is frankly like saying a pre-stretched belt. And that's getting a little better. Now we're not going to make, we're make this stiff like a rock, nor do we want it. It'll be too, ten, too tense. And you can see a little bit of deflection. We're going to measure deflection force on that. And that's the subject for the next video how to measure belt deflection force.